Hey friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg and I am the Audiophiliac and I am a prisoner. I am a prisoner of the sweet spot, the G spot of audio. That's what it is, where everything aligns. You're equidistant from the speakers, you're the proper distance from the walls around you, behind you, uh, you're at the right height, uh, everything's perfect and your imaging is as good as it's ever going to be, the sound stage has depth, everything is cooking. Now I'm definitely guilty of that and I, I'm really hung up on that because I love stereo imaging. But I know there are these guys who say, no, you know, I, I think I just want to like listen at the other end of the room or while I'm cooking or baking or doing other things. Yeah, you do your own, of course. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I think in a way this is part of the appeal of mono is that you're not locked in. I don't, I don't know if there was a sweet spot in the pre-stereo days where people sat in a specific spot. I, I mean, I guess they did, but I'm sure it wasn't as big of a deal because you were always going to be the distance you were from the speakers as opposed to two speakers where you kind of need to be the same distance from the left and right speakers for stereo to really work. But you know, th there was this old maxim in, in audio where you can tell if something sounds good if it sounds, I like this, real when you're outside of the room, you know, like at a show or something, you're going down the hall and you hear like, a sound coming from, oh man, that sounds incredible, that sounds so much, and, and yeah, you're hearing just reflections, you're, ne you're not hearing any direct sound when you're not in the room, and that could cover, those reflections can cover a multitude of sins. So it kind of disarms your, your critical faculties and things you, you just, you, you're not so, you're not so critical and you're just taking it say oh that, that music sounds really good yeah I know I've been there I've, I've, I've felt that way but the idea that when you're listening out of the sweet spot in a room in your room with the system um, it's it's valid I'm not saying it isn't I'm just saying a lot of what you're paying for if you have stereo speakers in a stereo system is kind of uh, lost in the translation from hearing direct sound to hearing more and more reflected sound because I guess that's what we're talking about when you're when you're off axis to a degree you're hearing more and more reflections of the walls the floor the ceiling etc etc and uh, that can sound good and again disarms you from being analytical analytical I suppose about the sound the character of the sound and it's kind of more of a, of a mess actually really anyway I'm a, a sweet spot listener. I wonder if you guys are. Tell, tell me what, well, let's put it this way. What percentage of the time do you listen in the sweet spot when you're listening as opposed to, you know, when you're having background music on, that is a very different category of listening. Background listening as opposed to focused, attentive listening, these are separate things. Both, again, valid, not putting down background listening. But I think background listening, it kind of be weird to have a very good system and only listen to it that way. I think you got the point. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. And now for today's music review. James Brown, he made a lot of records. And you know, maybe James entered the studio one day, he had a really bad cold, he had a sore throat, and he couldn't sing. So he said, let's do so, let's cut some instrumental tracks. Because this collection, uh, Soul Pride, from 1960 to 1969, um, these came out as singles, they, they, they appeared sporadically on albums, but he made gazillions of singles. I mean, there's these collections that go on and on of his singles, but I'm particularly fascinated with his instrumentals. He played keyboards mostly, but he was a drummer. He's, I think he started out as a drummer, so he's like, I think there's a few tracks on here where he does play drums, but it's all, with James, man, it is really about the groove, and when you hear it, uh, in a more uh, naked way without vocals, um, even more so. The band is so good and so tight. That's why they're, what is, they used to say they're the most sampled, James Brown music is the most sampled, uh, he's the most sampled artist of all time. Because he kept coming up with grooves and hooks and that rhythm section was just off the charts, how great they were. So look for this. I, I think it's out of print, but I don't think it's that hard to find. Soul Pride, and um, 
I think we're done. So as always, if you like these videos, please share them, like them, subscribe to this YouTube channel. And when you subscribe, there's two ways you can just subscribe. Well, you can subscribe and then as you're subscribing, there's a little bell and that means you'll be notified when every new video is posted, which is more or less every day. So if you, want, if you don't want to miss an exciting chapter of the Audiophiliac Daily Show, hit that little bell there and you'll never miss it. Anyway, I think we're done. Thanks so much for watching.